Hey there, do you have a brand new animated series concept and feel like you're ready to start to share it with people, maybe pitch it around? Well, you're gonna have to create what we in the industry call a pitch bible. So today I'm gonna talk about what's in a typical pitch bible, and then in the end tell you why context is king. Hey there, it's Eric Calderon. Welcome back to Surviving Animation, your guide to making it in the business of cartoons. And today we're actually talking about pitch bibles. So a pitch bible is kind of a document that you create that describes what your animated series is about. And it's really something that is given to buyers, given to distributors, and is used as a way to present your series when you're actually not there. So in a way, it has to actually represent your show when you can't personally be there to pitch it to anyone around. What's involved in a typical pitch bible? Let's get into the details. The first part of a pitch bible is going to be your logline. Now your logline is a key marketing statement that really describes what your whole series is about. This is a very disciplined form of writing, it's very specific, and it has to be done in a way that's accurate, that's quick, that's almost like promotional copy. Um, a great place to look at some examples of really good log lines is actually IMDb. Look up any TV series or film that you like and there's usually a very sharp little description about what that show is about. So for example, let's take a great new series called OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes by Ian Jones Quarterly and I'm gonna read actually the IMDb description. An enthusiastic young boy earns a job at a hero supply store and trains to become the greatest hero ever. Okay, another example of a great log line is actually a show called Ready, Jet, Go by Craig Bartlett. I'm gonna read the exact IMDb description for that. Jet Propulsion, an alien from another planet and his pals Sean, Mindy, and Sydney learn about science. Now the interesting thing about Ready, Jet, Go is that there's another website called Common Sense Media, which is kind of like a watchdog for uh, safe kids programming that parents can read if they want to see what a show is about. They actually have really, really good descriptions as well that are almost like a parental version of how to describe a show. Learning abounds in a delightful science-based series. So again, your logline is really your basic start point. You really don't want to have to say everything. You don't want to go in too much detail. And you don't want to make these super long run-on sentence. Just get in, get out, and give someone a quick little snap of what your series is about. Okay, the next section is the executive overview. Now, the executive overview is essentially a repetition of the logline, just expanded into about a paragraph, maybe three quarters of a page, to give your mm -hmm. quick reader a more general idea of what your show is about. Now, in an executive overview, you can talk about some of the character work, you can talk about maybe the setting, give someone a basic emotion and tone. Uh, maybe if you have a, a comic or a manga, or a franchise, you wanna put some of the marketing numbers there, some of the franchise sales numbers. But again, you don't wanna to go too deep. You wanna make sure it's uh, very tight, very um, very organized, so that someone who is a vice president level or above who just wants to get a you know one minute read of what your show is about has a good idea what it is, as it states, executive overview. Okay, the next section is the character section. Now this is where you're going to list up your main protagonists, your antagonists, your minor characters, and you want to show some really great art that shows what the genre of your show is about. So if you're doing a comedy, obviously show really funny drawings, really funny expressions. If you're doing an action show, then really show those heroic positions, show those gritty faces, and maybe talk about the superpowers or special abilities that your characters have. I can't stress enough in the character sections, be brief. It's a real easy tendency to want to go into these sections and actually have long backstories and, and, and childhood memories and, and very detailed plot points. Um, no buyer likes to read this. We really just want to get a basic idea of what your character's archetype is, maybe a few specific details, uh, and then move on. So again, be very brief in your character section. Following the character section is going to be the setting. Now the setting is going to be the world that your animated series takes place in and some specific details about why that is unique or why that affects your characters. Now I will say that sometimes setting can come before character if it's really required to understand why a character is important. So, for example, I worked on a series uh, called Slug Terra a few years ago, and actually Slug Terra takes place in an entirely subterranean world, and it's actually populated by these magical slugs. So, very hard to actually describe the characters in the show without the context of where they come from. So in that situation, I would say the setting is more important. Here's Slug Terra, subterranean world, magical slugs, and then describe the characters that live in there and what they do. Okay, after the setting, we are going to get into the episode synopses or springboards. Now, this is the section where you want to try to explain to the buyer the depth of your show. So now that they understand the setup, they understand the characters and the setting, you're going to want to show them that they have 
500 episodes, 200 episodes worth of stories that can be told with your world and situation and characters. So if you're actually doing a comedy, then it's really just important to show a springboard, you know, kind of give them an idea of where the comedy can launch from uh, without having to actually give all the details of the specific plot points. If we actually go back to OKKO, OK Let's Be Heroes, and go to the IMDb description of episode 48, it's a really good example of a good springboard. Uh, that springboard goes something like this. OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes episode 48, Let's Not Be Skeletons. When a charismatic huckster shows up to the plaza, the product he's selling turns everything upside down. So again, you just get a really basic idea of what that episode is about. You get a, a super villain and then you kind of go from there. Uh, by the way, definitely watch that episode. It's actually voiced and sung by uh, a friend of mine named Parker Simmons. So if you like uh, what Parker Simmons uh, does in that episode, you can actually uh, see below. I have uh, links to his Tumblr and Twitter account. Very funny guy. Anyway, uh, that's uh, Parker Simmons. And anyway, that's really what episode synopses are about. The last part of a Bible is going to be the team. Now this is a very basic section where you list yourself and all your partners and all your credentials and everything that lets the buyer know this is a team that can actually execute uh, the product that you are presenting. Now the most important part of the team section, which I, I can't stress enough again, is leave your contact information. So if, what if they like what you're doing, how are they going to get in touch with you? So it's a very basic thing, but I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to the end of a show Bible and I really liked it and maybe some executive had sent it to me and I go, oh my gosh, I don't know how to reach these people. So just a very simple thing, make sure they know how to get in contact with you. Okay, that is the basics of a pitch Bible. I just want to leave you guys with a little bit of advice at the end in general when doing these things. So I like to say that context is king and what I mean by that is now that you have this complete pitch Bible done, you might want to actually contextually change it uh, for each buyer that you are meeting. So let's say for example I have a great show and I decide to go to Amazon or DreamWorks with this pitch. Now those places are very writer centric, they're really interested in the narrative of a series, they really want to see what the story arc is. That kind of pitch Bible should be very writer centric and it should be very driven by uh, the writing process and, and the people who write the show. And there's going to be a lot more text, there's going to be a lot more narrative, um, and that's an Amazon DreamWorks show. Now on the other hand, let's say I want to take a presentation to Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network is a very artist driven place, a very storyboard driven place. So the show that I'm showing to them might have to show a lot more expansion on how the art side works and how the storyboard is going to be created. Maybe it's even heavier on the team and showing examples of what they've done in the past that are really funny um, uh, that makes Cartoon Network more comfortable that uh, it's going to work for them. Actually, in a way, if you have one show that you're going out to everyone, then maybe it's too generic of a show. I, I tend to think that uh, shows actually find specific slots and you should kind of be aware of those buyers. But either way, whatever it is that you're dreaming up, whatever it is that you're making, remember that every presentation is going to be slightly different. So in the best case scenario, really contextualize your pitch bible and presentation for the person or the people that you're going to be meeting. Okay, that's it for today's episode. I know that was a lot of information. I know this is probably a little bit longer than what you may get on YouTube, but I really feel like uh, Surviving Animation is kind of an educational channel. It's a business channel. So I hope you uh, stuck around for all that time. If you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, reach out in the comments below or you can write me on LinkedIn or Twitter, Instagram. I'd love to talk about cartoons. And uh, thank you for sticking around till the end again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.